Hey, you yeah. wine drinkers out there. Yeah. This is Ken Nelson, a Metro Wine super fan and NFL aficionado. I'm here today to talk to you about the NFL playoffs and to give an introduction for those of you who may or may not know a lot about the NFL football and how the playoffs work. So after being housebound for as many weeks as we've been during the pandemic, uh, you and I are both probably ready for anything other than our streaming service. I mean, I've watched everything, the Schitt's Creek episodes, The Crown, Yellowstone, Queen's Gambit, even Bridgerton. And, you know, we've consumed as much as we can, which is why the NFL playoffs present such a great opportunity, because it's unscripted. We don't know what's going to happen in advance. And some of the craziest things do happen, which makes it so much ex more exciting to watch. So to get ready for the big weekend of games, we thought we'd provide a brief introduction to any of you new Vove wine fans who want to learn just a bit about the game. Think of it like a chilled rosé, not too complicated, and hopefully a little bit fun. So where to begin? Uh, how about at the beginning? Uh, the NFL claims an August 1920 meeting held at a Hupmobile dealership in Canton, Ohio was its birth, though as far as we know there was no manger and there were no virgins present. Uh, technically this is the 101st season of the NFL. The oldest team still in the playoffs is the Green Bay Packers who were founded in 1919 and actually joined the league in 1921. The newest team is the Baltimore Ravens, who officially were formed in 1995. Though, to make it more confusing, they actually were the Cleveland Browns that moved to Baltimore to replace the Baltimore Colts, who moved to Indianapolis. And somehow Cleveland got to keep their history and Baltimore took their history. Anyways, long story. <laughs> the uh, Super Bowl was created in 1966. Um, as the championship game between the NFL or National Football League and the AFL or the American Football League. The uh, two, uh, actually the AFL was formed in 1960 as a competitive league and for the first four years after 1966 the Super Bowl was sort of uh, the champion of each league's regular season got together and played this you know what one game for you know who had the bragging rights. Um, Super Bowl LV or 55. Now, I don't know why they didn't play Super Bowl LV in Las Vegas. I mean, that just makes sense, right? But no, it'll be played February 7th in, of all places, Tampa. So who are the contenders for SBLV? Well, the league today has 32 teams split into two conferences. Um, the American Football Conference or AFC and the National Football Conference or NFC. Um, and then those 16 teams are further divided into four divisions of four teams each based on geography. The, uh, basically, the playoffs work where each division winner gets an automatic entry, and then the next three best records in each conference then get what's called a wild card. So um, the way they're seated is the top the division winners are seated one through four based on their records and then the wild cards are seated five through seven based on theirs uh, I mean last weekend we had the super wild card weekend um, can't the NFL come up with another adjectives besides super I mean how about the mega wild card weekend or the ultra wild card weekend anything but I guess they stuck with super uh, and coming into this weekend, uh, there are now eight teams still remaining. Um, the four from the NFC, in order of their seeding, are the Green Bay Packers, the New Orleans Saints, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Los Angeles Rams. The four from the AFC are the Kansas City Chiefs, the Buffalo Bills, the Baltimore Ravens, and the Cleveland Browns. Now, in the NFL playoffs, the way it works is the highest seed always plays the lowest seed, so they adjust you know, each week depending on who's left. So this weekend, we'll have the Green Bay Packers on Saturday afternoon play the Los Angeles Rams in the afternoon, and then we'll have, on, in that Saturday evening game, 
we're going to have the uh, Ravens versus the Bills at Buffalo. Then on Sunday, the top-seeded AFC Chiefs from Kansas City will be playing the number six-seeded Cleveland Browns. And then finally, in what we might call the Senior Bowl, 42-year-old quarterback Drew Brees from the New Orleans Saints and 43-year-old quarterback Tom Brady from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will meet. And, and to put that into terms of wine years, uh, that was the decade that gave us both the judgment in Paris with our Bordeaux and also gave us White Zinfandel. So, yeah. <laughs> now that we've covered what teams are playing and how they got here, Let's recap the players uh, the, the players and the positions who make up a football team. A, a team's game day roster is made up of 48 players, uh, with the starting offense and defense each having 11. And then there are three what they call special team players who are the punter, the kicker who kicks off and uh, kicks field goals and extra points. And then, believe it or not, the guy who snaps the ball to the punter and for field goals and actually, that was my role in high school football, to believe it or not. So I, I have a special respect for that long snapper. It's not fun, trust me. But that leaves 23 other players who then make up the rest of the roster. And they're basically substitutes and also backups in case of injury. Now, on the offense on every play, there, there's a quarterback, of course. And then there's five offensive linemen, the, the center who snaps the ball to the uh, quarterback, uh, and then there's two guards on each side of him, and then there's two tackles on each of each side of the tackle. I mean, uh, of the guards. So after you get through those six, that means there's five more positions that the team, and these are the guys that can run the ball, catch the ball, and they're put in different combinations depending on the specific play. So you may have, you know, four wide receivers and a running back. You may have a tight end uh, or two tight ends and two running backs and only one wide receiver. So, you know, part of the strategy is, you know, putting together uh, the actual each play who you want to actually be in the game. Uh, then um, basically the way those positions work are the running backs are in the backfield with the quarterback. The tight ends are next to the tackles on the line of scrimmage. And then the wide receivers are split out wide depending on and, uh, the specific play. On the defensive side, you have, uh, there are two, and this sounds really like deep, complex football talk, but it's not. They call the base alignments, which are the 4-3 and the 3-4. Yeah, it sounds impressive, but really all that means is the four Four, three has four defensive linemen and three linebackers. And the defensive linemen are the, the guys that line up immediately opposite the offensive linemen uh, where the big collisions take place. And then the linebackers are standing up and kind of looking and moving around and trying to figure out, probing where the, they think that the offense is weakest. And in the, so in the 4-3, it's four linemen, three linebackers. In the 3-4, it's three linemen, four linebackers. Not a big difference. And, and really, it, it's something that you'll hear talked about, but nothing really to focus too heavily on. Um, but, and, and then, of course, after those seven, you have two cornerbacks who are matched up with the wide receivers. And, and then you have the two safeties. The one safety, called the strong safety, is usually matched up kind of following the running back or the tight end. And the other, what they call free safety, is really the deepest player on the field for the defense. He's sort of the really the last line of defense. Um, so this is, that's the, kind of the, the setup here for each play. But um, you might have noticed that I used a lot of caveats and, and there's a lot of usuals and offens and primarilies because this is where the game gets really interesting. The, f the fact is that football is as much mental as it is physical. It's, you know, what I like to call, you know, uh, actually just to steal it from the Netflix series, uh, the quarterback's gambit because it really is a chess match between the offense and the defense. 
I mean, it really is chess being played by very large humans. Because, you know, that, that's what makes it fun, right? Because you're, you're probing, you're looking to see what is the weak point of the offense? What is the weak point of the defense? And so, for example, when, when you see a player go in motion before the play on the offensive side, you'll see a lot of times a wide receiver or a running back start running. It's not that they're getting a head start to, to try to, like, you know, run faster. Really, what's going on is the quarterback is then kind of looking to see, okay, this guy lined up on the left side and is running over to the right side. Is there a defender who's going along with him? And that'll tell him that, hmm, this, this is maybe the defensive alignment or who's responsible for what. Where might there be a gap in the defense? So he's constantly looking at that. He's looking at the way the players are lined up on the defense, and he's calling signals. And, and in fact, and sometimes if he, the play that they called in the huddle, they may say, eh, that doesn't look like it's going to work depending with the way the defense is set up. So he may call what's, what's called an audible. He may actually change the play at the line of scrimmage. And you know, you'll hear some of these guys yelling, kill, 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 and whatever. That, that usually means they're changing the play up at the line. On the other side of the ball, the defense is doing their best to con convince the offense they're going to do something that they're not. So they may fake like they're going to have all these players blitz the quarterback and then immediately drop back. Or, you know, th th there's all different ways that you can, you know, try to fool your opponent into do what you're exactly planning on doing each play. There's also a lot of trickery after the ball is snapped. So sometimes you'll see, for example, uh, the quarterback will fake the ball to a running back and then actually drop back and pass. And what he's hoping to do is to convince the defensive lineman that, that to go after the running back and not to go after him. And so that, that's called play action, by the way. And in the, on the same t uh, time, you'll see uh, the defenders, sometimes they'll line up and all slant a certain direction or loop around each other. So they're trying to fool the offensive linemen into who's going where. So it's this, this game of mental chess about, you know, what, what do you think they're going to do and what do they actually do? And that's why I really, in, in all seriousness, love the sport of football. So um, when you see like a wide open receiver or you see an unblocked, uh, you know, blitzer going into the quarterback, it's not necessarily that it was out physical on the other team it, it was they they came up with a strategy that somehow there were more players on one side than on the other and, and that's really kind of you know you're, you're looking to see like just like chess how many players you can have in the play involved uh, and can you have more players on your side more involved than the other side so so when you're watching the uh, the playoffs this weekend take a minute to appreciate the election intellectual beauty of the game uh, those two senior citizens we mentioned, Tom Brady and, and Drew Brees, I mean, they are masters of their craft. In fact, what I like to say is, is they're, like, they're like an old world, world Barolo that's, you know, just been aging and, and maybe a little mellow, but really is at the top of its game. So, and then Aaron Rodgers, my quarterback for my Green Bay Packers, He's 37, another wonderful guy who's been around and is going to be in the Hall of Fame someday. And then f look at the other quarterbacks. Look at Patrick Mahomes from the Kansas City Chiefs. Look at uh, Josh Allen from Buffalo, uh, Baker Mayfield from Cleveland, Lamar Jackson from Baltimore. They're like, uh, they're like an, a young Zinfandel. They're really raw but talented, big and bold. And, and sometimes a little scary. Uh, so uh, my advice to you is to enjoy these weekend's games. And, you know, if you're the, and I apologize to you L.A. Rate, uh, Rams fans because I haven't mentioned your quarterback. Um, you have a great defense, okay? And uh, let's just hope that uh, they can keep the game close. And if not, well, hey, it's a great excuse to start drinking. And enjoy, enjoy your wines from Metro Wines, and go Packers.